Hi, everyone. So, as Afi just said, my name is Hannah Thompson. I am a regulatory affairs advisor at Seafish. Um, I joined Seafish back in 2016. Um, I've typically been advising on traceability, nomenclature, labeling, integrity. Um, but most recently, I've taken on the task of developing our export regulation work. Um, so today I'm going to discuss some of the new requirements and processes that exporters of uh, seafood will need to be familiar with once the UK has left the European Union. So in this session I'll briefly discuss the drivers for developing Seafish's export regulation work and how we have been facilitating proportionate export procedures in case of a no deal exit. Given the breadth and complexity of export procedures and the short amount of time we have in this presentation, um, I'll be focusing mainly on UK exports to the European Union in the event of a no deal exit. Um, so to do this, we'll look at the five key steps for exporting to the European Union. Um, we will briefly ask the question, but what if we leave the EU with a deal? Um, before concluding with what exactly exporters should be doing right now to prepare for a no deal exit. So since the vote to leave the European Union on the 23rd of June 2016, the regulation team in Seafish have observed an increase in export-related inquiries. Given the likely impact of EU exit, and given the role of the regulation team to facilitate um, proportionate regulation, we soon recognise the need to enhance our export regulation work. Seafish's 2018-21 corporate plan provided the opportunity to develop this work area, and as a result, a work stream was dedicated to export regulation as part of Challenge 1, Changing Landscape. EU exit quickly became the focus of our evolving export regulation work, and it soon became apparent that maintaining the ability to export to the European Union with ease was a key concern for the seafood industry. In the last year, we've utilised Seafish's unique position in the industry to liaise between industry and government on EU exit-related export matters. We've worked closely with government departments to ensure that new procedures and legislation ensure exports to the EU can continue as frictionlessly as possible. We've also worked with industry um, to make sure they are informed um, and prepared for an ideal export scenario. So this might look a little bit familiar to some of you in the room. Um, Scottish Enterprise, Highlands and Islands Enterprise, Skills Development Scotland and Business Gateway in partnership with all these organisations uh, produce this fantastic summary, this five-step process for exporting to the EU in an ideal scenario. So during this session we'll have a look at each of those processes in detail. So step one, get an ERE number. If the UK leaves the EU with no deal on the 12th of April, many UK businesses will need to apply the same processes to EU trade that apply to trade with the rest of the world. Attaining a UK economic operator registration and identification number is essential for those of you wishing to import or export with the European Union post EU exit. It allows you or your agent to submit the necessary declarations and to apply for customs simplification procedures. You can apply for an ERE number on the .gov.uk website, but it is worth noting that at the moment it could take up to three days for you to receive your ERE number. You don't need an ERE number if you already trade with non-EU countries because you should already have one. Um, or if you only import or export across the Irish border. According to HMRC data at the end of February, only 17% of UK businesses who export an import with the EU had registered for a UK ERE number. It is therefore vital that the UK seafood industry consider the relevance of requiring an ERE number and act accordingly. So step two, check your commodity and tariff codes. Exporters should plan on the basis that World Trade Organization tariffs will be introduced following a no deal exit. As you may all know, the tariff rate of a good is listed by the commodity code for the good. The UK Trade Tariff Tool will help you find the commodity code for your good. However, this should be used quite cautiously, because if you use or identify the wrong commodity code for your good, you risk paying the wrong tariff, and you risk delays at the border, even if the good, uh, or even the goods could just be blocked by the EU. So if you're unsure in any way with what commodity code to use, and therefore the tariff to apply, HMRC is best placed to provide the necessary advice. 
To give you a rough idea of what the WTO tariffs would look like for exports to the EU, here is a bit of a summary of the UK's key exports to the EU and the potential full tariff that may be applied to those goods. As you can see, most of the products have a tariff range and that's to allow for various commodity codes within that description. I don't want to dwell on the table too much today because imports um, and tariffs will be covered elsewhere during the summit. And also we have guides on the Seafish website that can help you through this. So step three, know what certificates you, uh, your products need. This has been a really big work area for us. So we'll start with export health certificates. Seafood and other products of animal origin will need an export health certificate to enter the EU. An export health certificate confirms that the consignment complies with the relevant EU health legislation. Export health certificates must be applied for in advance. Now I've spoken to a few local authorities over the last few months trying to determine what kind of, or advance means. Um, and what I can gather is 24 hours is the absolute minimum notice period a local authority would need. So once the export health certificate has been completed, it must accompany the consignment. It's worth pointing out at this stage that export health certificates are not required for direct landings of UK registered fishing vessels into the European Union ports. Exporters can apply for blocks of export health certificates to be held by their nominated authorised signatory, be it local authority or an official veterinarian. And that will be ready for export as and when it's required. Issuing blocks of serially numbered export health certificates to local authorities or official vets in advance will help when the certificates are required quickly. It provides exporters with the flexibility to choose what works best for their business, granting them flexibility to change the border, inpe border inspection post, the destination and the consignment information. The minimum, e minimum information exporters must provide to apply for a block certificate um, is the exporter's name as a consigner and the exporter's nominated signatory. The remaining information can be completed at the time of completion of the export health certificate. So how do you go about getting an export health certificate in an ordeal EU exit? Well, firstly, you would find the export health certificate application form and other relevant documents on the UK government's export health certification form finder tool. If you're exporting from Northern Ireland, however, you would need to contact your local DERA office. When you're completing the export health certificate application form, you nominate your authorised signatory to inspect your consignment and also indicate the quantity of any block certificates that you might require. The exporter must then uh, send the completed forms to the email address provided in the form. From there, AFA, the um, Animal and Plant Health Agency, will send your export health certificate to your nominated authorised signatory, who will check that your consignment meets the EU's health requirements and will complete and sign the export health certificate. It's advised that exporters contact their nominated signatory to, to discuss any specific needs and that's quite crucial for perishable fishery products. The completed export health certificate, as I mentioned previously, will have to go with the product um, and the authorised signatory will send the final copy to AFA. Now a new certification system is due to be launched in summer this year, so after all that that I've just discussed it might all change in a few months time. catch certificate. So it's expected that the number of export catch certificates issued in the UK will increase from approximately 300 a year to 210,000 a year once the UK has left the European Union. Although this is a very rough approximation, UK exporters will be required to obtain a validated catch certificate to accompany their exports for most consignments of fish or fish products into the EU. Some aquaculture products, freshwater products, are excluded from this requirement. Catch certificates show that fishery products were caught legally and it is the responsibility of the exporter to ensure that catch certificates are completed at the point of export. If a consignment is sourced from more than one UK vessel, a multiple vessel schedule would be needed and completed and to be submitted along with the catch certificate. Storage document. So, if you are exporting to the EU fish sauce from another country and just storing it in the UK, not processing it in any way, you will need to apply for a storage document. 
There's no minimum storage time required um, you know, to determine the applicability of this document, um, but a copy of the CAT certificate from the original consignment must be kept with the storage document. For processing statements, it works in a very similar way. So fish um, sourced from another country that has been processed in the UK, um, you will have to apply for a processing statement. And again, a copy of the CAT certificate from the original consignment must be included with the processing statement. On the 5th of March, a new IT system was launched uh, and it enables exporters to attain the CAT certificate, storage document, processing statement and other supporting documents in one application to the online form on the .gov.uk website. So step four, check your product labelling. Exported products must be labelled correctly to reflect the UK's third country status when the UK leaves the European Union. UK products can no longer use EU in country of origin labelling and an address for an EU importer or food business will be required on the product labels. In a no deal scenario, all seafood must also be included must also include the new form of the UK health and identification mark. Health and identification marks are the oval marks that must be applied to seafood to confirm that they have been produced in a UK establishment, inspected by the competent authority where necessary, and are fit for human consumption. For businesses who export seafood to the EU, the new form of the health and identification marks must carry either the GB or the full name United Kingdom in capital letters on the packaging, and this is instead of the EC abbreviation. Here are some examples. Both the health and identification marks are bound by specific size and dimension requirements. In an ordeal scenario, the revised marks must be used from the date the UK ceases to be a member of the European Union, i.e. potentially the 12th of April this year. For seafood placed on the UK domestic market, food businesses may choose to either apply GB, United Kingdom, but they can also use the abbreviation UK. <clears throat> so lastly, step five, decide if you will use a customs agent. Most businesses use a customs broker, agent or freight forwarder to make customs declarations on their behalf. This can make exporting simpler and faster and can reduce the risk of delays at the border. Alternatively, exporters can make, de make the declarations themselves um, and this would be by obtaining the approved software. Now, although this is better suited for the more experienced exporters, it can be more cost effective than using an agent. So, in a nutshell, that's what we would do. Uh, that would be the new export procedures in a no deal exit. But what if we leave with a no deal, with a deal? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's very dependent on the nature of the deal that's agreed. If the UK is subject to an implementation period, it's possible that many of the arrangements we've just discussed will be postponed until, at the, until the end of the implementation period, if at all. However, some procedures might be required during the implementation period. But either way, we will make sure that we keep our guidance updated and uh, make sure that we reflect any information that we receive from the UK government. So what should exporters be doing right now to prepare for a no deal exit? There are a couple of things that I haven't actually mentioned yet, but are certainly worthy of consideration. You'll need to make sure that you send all consignments of fish and fishery products to the EU through an EU border inspection post. If the fish was both caught by a UK flag vessel and landed in the UK before being transported to the EU. So check your point of entry in the European Union. Is it a designated border inspection post? If so, is it authorised to accept your type of good? Make sure that you have submitted the relevant information to Food Standards Scotland to enlist you on the national list of approved establishments for the EU. Make sure that you have applied for an EORI number. Check out the commodity codes and WTO tariff rates for your goods and familiarise yourselves with the export health and catch certificate forms. Lastly, keep an eye on our preparing your business for EU exit guide. The regulation team keeps this guide up to date extremely regularly and it is a great resource for answering any EU exit related questions but I'm a bit biased. So 
Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Um, as Ava mentioned, we'll be taking questions at the end of this section of the agenda. Um, but yeah, I'm around all day if you have any other thoughts or comments. So thank you very much.